you know, in a, in a lower middle class, you know, working class neighborhood in the Bronx. You know, we had a one bedroom crummy apartment. Uh, you know, we had a superintendent who, there were times he was kind of out of it for a while and forgot to order coal. Uh, so I remember, you know, uh, having, you know, periods of, you know, a couple of weeks with no heat uh, because the pipes would freeze and then they'd have to come in and fix them. One, one day we woke up and uh, our goldfish uh, was frozen solid. You know, it was like a, a stark awakening. You know, I would come home from, from uh, kindergarten and I'd say to my, my father, I'd say, hey, Dad, you know, where did we where did we come from? You know, Tommy, you know, came from Ireland, and Luigi, his, his folks came from Italy, and my dad you know, would say, uh, sometimes Russia, you know, sometimes sometimes Poland. You know, every couple of years, I'd say, so, Dad, where did we come from? It became, like, kind of a funny thing. Years and years later, uh, you know, both my parents had passed away, and we're going through papers, and I find this beautiful passport of my grandfather. And uh, it says country of origin. It says sometimes Russia, sometimes Poland. <laughs> I started laughing. Imagine trying to explain that to, a, to an immigration guy. Like, so where do you come from? Sometimes Russia, sometimes Poland. So yeah, so we, we had a mixed past. <laughs> I don't really have writer's block anymore. I can usually come up with something. Sometimes I know it's a home run. The feeling is, is good and it's just, you know, the, the piece is almost perfect. Uh, and then of course I get, you know, people who write in and go, how could you say that? It was, you know, you consulted, you know, my grandfather who was an optometrist many years ago. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I try to explain I mean no harm. You know, I come, I come in peace. Uh, and uh, my main goal uh, is really to make people think. The Fusarium outbreak took place. You were right there for the AOA and for the profession. What was that experience on that media tour like? Well, it, it, it was actually one of the highlights of my career and actually probably my personal life. And we're joined this morning by one of the country's top experts on this infection. Dr. Arthur Epstein is an optometrist who chairs the contact lens and cornea section of the American Optometric Association. And he joins us from Phoenix, Arizona this morning. Uh, I, should, I should say, you know, Thank goodness I married a very understanding woman because, you know, I get very focused on things. So I put everything on hold. Probably the, the greatest moment uh, was when Jim Saviola called, who was uh, at the FDA at the time, and he said, I have to tell you, you guys are unbelievable. The AOA is so far ahead of any other organization. Uh, and the great thing is that literally changed how optometry was, was viewed. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the AP style book all of a sudden said optometrists and doctors was the first time, you know, in our history where that happened. So it was a, it was a great moment uh, personally. It was a great moment for optometry. Um, and, you know, it's, it's funny. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I really am because, um, you know, some people never find love. Uh, and sometimes they find love and it's really not a good thing for them. You know, people do crazy things for love. You know, I was invited to speak in Sedona. I drove up uh, and uh, I'm giving a lecture on God knows what, you know, infection or something like that. And there's this, you know, lovely, you know, young lady sitting in the middle of this, you know, large, uh, you know, lecture room uh, on the end. And uh, as I remember it, this is so, you know, romantic. I think we may need to make a movie about it. Uh, and she's like in color and everything else is black and white. People started coming up and talking to me and, you know, I go, okay, and, you know, and uh, anyway, Shannon uh, came over and we never stopped talking. I mean, we literally have never stopped talking. Uh, when we got into practice, I mean, she was, she's just amazing and people love her. She has this girly laugh, which I can't even reproduce. I mean, try but you know she's taking a, a golden pressure and she goes ah, you know she has this way I sound like a horse and she has this girly laugh and she helped create the practice and she's so detail oriented and I'm big picture oriented it just it could not have been a better match just you know it's it's like two pieces that fit and uh, I don't, I'm not sure everybody has that I hope everybody does in their life uh, but you know I'm really I'm really fortunate uh, well yes Optometry, look at where we were and look at where we are. We serve a purpose and we do it well. We take care of people. We change their lives. We save lives. We save sight. We're competent. We're capable. And legislators ultimately will realize that. You can spend as much money as you want, but ultimately,
ultimate weight, we will prevail. And at some point, I think optometry and ophthalmology will find a, a path towards some form of reconciliation or maybe even synergy where we merge into one continuous eye care uh, profession uh, that works well.